Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen from Player Attack, and we are here at E3 2012. We're in the Sony booth, and I'm here with Ian from Giant Sparrow, and we're talking about the unfinished Swan, which is a little arty thing. And and can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, sure. The unfinished Swan is a first-person painting game. And the game begins in a totally white space, and players are throwing paintballs to try and discover what's around them. So this isn't a new game. This has been in development for ages, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it seems like that to some of us. <laughs> uh, it started off about four years ago as a graduate student project. And then three years ago, uh, we signed a deal with Sony and been working on it ever since. And now it's finally being revealed, and it's actually playable here on the show floor. And what sort of response have you been getting from people? Uh, confusion, I think, which is you know what we sort of designed the game for. It's a game about exploration, and we really wanted players to feel like, in addition to exploring the world around them, that they're also exploring the game. So the game begins with a totally white screen, and we find that players usually spend about like 15 to 30 seconds waiting for the game to tell them what to do. And it's a little uh, nerve-wracking. It's like being a parent, you know, watching people like in there. They're sort of, you know, in an uncomfortable spot. But then when they start to get uncomfortable enough, that's good for us because they start mashing the buttons. And then they hear like, oh, I'm a person. I'm moving around. And they start really paying attention to small details that they might otherwise miss in a game that is constantly telling them, you know, go here or shoot this guy or whatever. And, you know, then they throw their first paintball and discover like, oh, that's what this game is about. So even though there is that confusion, and some would say that that's a bad thing, it's not going to prompt you to have, you know, press X to start on the main screen, right? Uh, not yet. And I think so far <laughs> Sony has been incredibly gracious about letting us, you know, make the kind of game that we wanted to make. And, you know, something that uh, on the design side we struggle with a lot, trying to find out, like, what is that balance? And, and certainly there are things where, you know, when a casual player spends five minutes in the same room not knowing what to do, that's more where we're like, okay, we've got to do our jobs a little bit better there but trying to balance it out so players feel like they're genuinely exploring something and not just being told where to go. The game uh, looks amazing, but there are, you know, it, it doesn't just look like the very beginning. Pe people have been showing that there's that one scene that everyone's seen, but it, it actually evolves into much, much more than that in relatively quick time, right? Yeah, we find that with the game, like our, our goal is to evoke a sense of awe and wonder. And after about 15 minutes, it stops being about that. Uh, if you're just doing this splatting black paint in a white world, it becomes more of a challenge for players, which isn't necessarily the game we wanted to make. And so after about 15 minutes of splatting, we go off in a totally different direction. And I think this is the first time that we're showing people, you know, what that direction is. And, you know, it's, it's not all white. It's, uh, you know, again, we're trying to surprise people. So, you know, hopefully it's a surprise. And my apologies to anyone who wants to know more about the game. We're doing our best not to tell them because, you know, the game about surprise, it works a lot better when they're finding out the first time when they play it. Well, I, I understand the element of surprise. Can you tell us how how we end up in this all-white world in the first place? Sure. The player is uh, a nine-year-old boy named Monroe. And Monroe wakes up one night and finds that uh, this painting of a swan that was the last thing he had from his mother, uh, the swan has stepped out of the painting and wandered off into this totally white space. And so Monroe goes off, you know, following these swan footprints initially, trying to find where the swan is. And it's something that we lifted pretty egregiously out of Alice in Wonderland, which was, you know, like a big source of inspiration for us <laughs> and, you know, something that evoked a sense of awe and wonder and did so in a world that felt pretty open. You know, Alice in Wonderland moves along without a clear sense of where you're going. And yet, like, there's enough continuity that it doesn't feel disorienting, like, in a bad way. And so that was something that we wanted our game to feel like. So we basically just took the white rabbit and made it a white swan. <laughs> so when is the game coming out? Do you have any sort of a, a window or a date or a... You're looking at me funny now. I have no idea. I wish I did. Uh, sometime in 2012. I mean, I can say, what is it, like June 8th or something? Uh, so sometime in the next six months. But beyond that, your guess is as good as mine. Fabulous. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.